Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, woman threatened me at work and regretted it. The second story, guy stole my stuff, listed it on Craigslist. The third story, lobbyist will be fired after insulting my family. And the first story is, you threaten me at work by using your children? Your daughters don't get to walk for graduation as valedictorians. So, this transpired a few years back when I was 18. The revenge technically was not done by me, but I'm a key witness in the events that occurred. For some context, I used to work at a big chain store in the deli department. Wasn't a great job, but it was my first one, and it helped pay for college, so I endured it. But because of what I was subjected to, I quit shortly after, despite it having a great end result. In my hometown, population of 4,500, there was this small group of PTA moms who were pretty high up on the chain of command, but also led their own company for party planning. They're known mostly for the fact their daughters are all best friends and are straight A 4.0 students, and all three were supposed to be valedictorians. I knew them mostly because they were the we hate drama crowd, but always spread drama about people. Unfortunately, it happened to me at one point and put me in some pretty deep depression. But that's for another story. Not just that, but all three daughters were accepted to Ivy League schools on a full ride scholarship. The one fault they had, besides the drama, was that they were really arrogant, prideful people, both the daughters and mothers, and were incredibly rude to anyone who wasn't rich, white, or even super in shape. At the time, I was pretty overweight and had a pretty bad acne problem. This will come into play later. Well, one day they come in asking for 300 pieces of fried chicken and 200 pinwheel sandwiches. For anyone who's ever worked in any capacity of retail or food, you know that for an order that big, we need at least a couple days notice to order more inventory and actually cook everything on time. Not to mention I was the only one left working for the night, so their order would have been impossible anyway. Well, these ladies thought they could pick it up on the spot to ensure food quality. I told them that they would need to fill out an order form and that it would be a couple of days, and they flipped their SH. I'm not talking a small sigh in disbelief, I'm talking vague threats to actually have me not walk during graduation. Here's how the talk basically went. PTA Mom 1 Um, I need this food today. We're the party planners of the lake party you probably didn't get invited to, and the party's in two hours. Me, I'm sorry but we literally don't have the staff or the time for that right now. I'm more than happy to make you a 96 piece, but it'll take about an hour. PTA Mom 2 You think that's effing funny? Do you know who I am? Me, no, I don't. PTA Mom 1 Yeah, we're the official party planners of hometown. We also run the high school PTA, so our daughters probably know you. You don't want your image tarnished, do you? Me, brushing off the vague threat of using her daughter. That's pretty cool actually. Sounds like a cool job. But there's just no way for 300 pieces and 200 pinwheels to be done in the amount of time you want. I apologize for any inconvenience it makes for you. If you want, I'm more than happy to get a manager so they can talk to you. PTA Mom 3 when your manager gets here, I'm going to have you effing fired and kicked out of walking this year. We don't want fatties taking up the walkway anyway. I don't know how they knew I was a senior. Me, ma'am, I'm sorry but I will not tolerate that kind of threat and I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. PTA mom too, but we didn't get our food yet. I'm sorry but like I stated before, it would not be possible to complete that task. And with the way I was treated, I have the right to refuse service to you anyway. Have a good day. PTA mom 1. You will be hearing from us, you fat F. I hope our daughters don't know anything dirty about you. Manager walks out. Manager, excuse me ladies, but you have no reason to treat my staff like that. You may think you run this town, but that does not give you any reign to treat someone like that. PTA moms, F you, while walking out. A few days go by, and I haven't heard anything from either them or my manager. Then one day at class, I see the daughters in a corner crying with each other. I got word from one of their friends, who was somewhat close with me, that in the past two days, they were told they could no longer walk at graduation due to being caught for cheating on basically every assignment and were no longer attending any Ivy League school. At first I thought this was just a coincidence to what had occurred the week prior, but apparently what happened was that a bystander overheard the heated exchange and this bystander also happened to be a former member of the PTA. So she had a lot of dirt on the mothers and their children. Apparently this was her breaking point as she was skeptical to come forward prior about many things due to scrutiny. It turns out the mothers were basically getting the answers to every assignment by either paying off teachers, using vague threats against their families, or straight up saying they would have sex with them. Because our school was smaller, there were only a handful of teachers that needed to be pleased or threatened. That was my moment of happiness. Not also did those women get kicked out of the PTA, but their daughters, who I mentioned used to be my old bullies, were dropped from ever attending the school of their dreams. The last I heard the daughters stayed in the hometown, and now work in the same deli department I used to work in. 
Some have stated that Ivy League schools only give financial aid for those who aren't financially privileged. I personally do not know the finances of the family or how FAFSA works for those types of schools, as I only went to a small university. Those claims were of the daughters and mothers, so I don't know how much of it is valid. As for finances, my only evidence is the fact that they all drove very nice 2007 and 2008 BMW and Audis. This story takes place in 2010. Because I'm from a small town farming community of 4,500, I personally call that pretty rich. As I stated in the last sentence, I heard they now work there. I've not been back to my hometown in over four years, so I'm basing this off word of mouth from old friends. I definitely agree that it was pretty odd for party planners to be this terrible with prepping. My only guess is that they only operated in my hometown, and bigger parties were not a typical thing. The biggest get-together for the year is Christmas Mass. As for what led up to them losing their scholarships, I'm unaware of the events that occurred behind closed doors. It wasn't something that occurred overnight, but more after 10 to 11 days. My assumption is there were text messages that had evidence that made it easy to determine. While we had a population of 4,500, about 1,400 children attended the high school alone. The high school took in students from other nearby areas, so it was common to know people who lived 15 to 20 miles from the school. My senior class alone had 400 students. It was an interesting setup for sure. The second story is, theft isn't victimless, and yes, I did take it personally. This was about two years ago while I was living at my buddy's place. His place wasn't in the best part of town, so theft happens all the time, and for the large part most of these crimes are met with a sucks to be you attitude from the police, who then create a report and forget anything happened entirely. Okay, so I wake up early on Thursday morning with a call from my roommate, who was running to work at 5am, and he explains the detached garage has been broken into. The thief broke in through the window and stole a bunch of stuff with highlights being Milwaukee drills, motorcycle jackets, and the receiver in the sub from one of those surround sound systems in a box. Package deals, but leaves the speakers around the rest of the place. Saying I would just live it is an understatement. I work hard for my things and have no intention of replacing them, so some D can sell them for a very small profit. So for roughly the next four days, my focus is entirely on this, and you'll see why shortly. So I know the chances are slim that I'll ever find my stuff, but hey, it can't hurt to look for it on the common online sales places. I used eBay searching local sellers only, and I put alerts on Craigslist, an extremely handy feature, and I tell my roommate to keep an eye on Craigslist since he has a little time. So fast forward to Friday, my roommate calls me up and tells me he thinks he found our stuff on Craigslist. I pull up the ad and sure as SH there it is. This beautiful not too bright gentleman had taken all the stuff he took from us and put it into a single ad in the barter section of Craigslist. He even added the model numbers, not serial numbers, making things very easy to identify. They give away this cheap surround sound system for which he only had the receiver and the sub and after a quick search reveals this particular system is only sold as a package. You can't buy the single components, so this was definitely our stuff. I call the police, thinking case closed, but guess what, they don't care that I found this stuff on Craigslist and after about 20 minutes of complaining on the phone with non-emergency, they ask me what they want them to do. I say, send a car over here, I want to speak with someone directly. So they reluctantly send a car with a very nice officer. She was nice. I'm sarcastic, but she was really nice. Who runs the number associated with the Craigslist ad? And guess what? He's got a rap sheet a mile long and has been arrested like 10 times for theft. With the break in the case, I think I'm home free. But nope, the cop can't do anything. The investigator needs to take care of this, she says, and leaves. So I call the investigator, who doesn't work on Fridays. I ask who I can speak with, so they send me up to the investigator's team line, to which no one answers at all. I try again on Saturday and learn investigators don't work weekends at all, and I'd have to wait until Monday before I can talk to my investigator. Good thing crime doesn't happen on weekends, otherwise cops' weekends would be in trouble. So I call on Monday, and Sergeant drags his feet is out sick. It was at that point I was done trying to call them. I drove to the police station and demanded to speak with an investigator. I mentioned to this new investigator the situation and the name of the guy who was in the Craigslist ad, and the cop knows him very well and has arrested him on a couple of occasions. The cop is confident the police can now help me, since I've already done all the dang work here. Finally, the cops tell me to make a meeting with this guy and let him know when and where. So again, the work is on me and to meet this guy. Thanks, police. So I text him a few times with no response. Then I call him and joke around and express interest in a variety of items, most of which are mine, but a few that aren't. Since simply asking for the things from one of the victims is suspicious in my mind. So I tell him I'm Christmas shopping. I then say I'm from out of the area and ask him to pick the location and he lists off a few places, one of which is a grocery store within eyesight of the police station. So I pick that and laugh to myself at how this is turning out. I call the cops, let them know the deal is on and when and where it is. 
They say they'll be in an unmarked car and that I should take my wallet out as a sign to swoop in to make the arrest. So I pull into the parking lot. I see no cops and I stop and wait. I think the guy's a no-show when he finally shows 10 minutes later. My heart's pounding at this point. I get out and meet the mastermind criminal and shake his hand. He proceeds to pull out my stereo, then my drills, and a few other odds and ends. And before I can get my wallet out, a gold Taurus speeds in, and out pop three cops with guns drawn, and cuff the guy. When this happened, I just like turned around and walked away for a second, while they put him in the car. The lead cop asks me if this is my stuff, and I say yes, it matches with the previously provided, very detailed description I gave the police. All the while, the guy in cuffs is yelling, that's my stuff. Finally, the cops get the warrant, for his apartment, find the rest of all of our stuff, and a few other people's things and I have all my stuff back by Wednesday the following week. He received 1.5 years in a state penitentiary for his efforts. I kind of fixate sometimes, and he got unlucky by stealing from someone who didn't just claim renter's insurance. The last story is, insult my father-in-law, I'll get you fired and shunned from the only career you've ever had. This story was told to me about 10 years ago by the guy my dad worked for, who also happened to be a Texas state representative. We'll call him D. D is a pretty simple guy. He has an exorbitantly rich daddy's money wife, who's an extraordinarily kind woman, despite her birthright. This will be important later. One day, Dee tries to pass some basic legislature that will peeve off the restaurant lobbyists a little bit, but in the end benefit the safety and health of the entire state. One lobbyist in particular takes great issue with this. He seems to take this SH personally. Any speaking event or public appearance Dee makes, this guy is there, heckling and booing. One day, Dee tries to talk calmly to the guy one-on-one -on -one to see what his problem is, and the guy just loses it. He insults Dee's father-in-law, wife, young kids, and basically anyone he's ever known. Dee takes a minute to process the guy's rant and shakes his head, patting the guy on the shoulder and walking off. Here's where the revenge comes in. Almost as soon as he's back in his office, Dee starts writing the most BS hilarious legislature to F with the restaurant lobby. Stuff like all ingredients in a menu item must be displayed on the menu in double space 12 point font, or no more than 10 designated parking spaces per restaurant. This sets the lobby off, and they have to work their A's off to keep this stuff out of Congress. Eventually, another lobbyist asks D why he hates their lobby so much. D calmly replies, I don't hate your lobby, I hate A-hole's name. Needless to say, his entire lobby turns against him, fires him, and he can never be a lobbyist again. Thank you for listening.